Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Thielman. I'm the chairperson of the Arlington High School Building Committee. And we look forward to speaking with you tonight uh, about the high school building project, where we are with that project. And we look forward to uh, answering your questions. Um, <clears throat> If we go to the next slide, you'll see the agenda for the evening. We're gonna give you a project recap. I'll introduce the project team. Um, the project team uh, from Skanska, the owner's project manager, will talk about logistics coordination and our experience. Uh, a phase overview and mitigation measures will be given by Consigli, that's the contractor for the project. Skanska is our owner, owner's project manager. We'll talk about project resources and then we'll um, answer your questions. So as a recap, if we go to the next slide, um, the Arlington High School rebuild effort began in 2014, shortly after the New England uh, Association of Schools and Colleges, NIASC, did a, a, a visit to our high school and re-accredited our high school, but said that we had to make significant changes to the physical plan. We began a process which culminated with uh, the town of Arlington being awarded a grant from uh, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the MSBA, to do a feasibility study. We did a feasibility study. Uh, we were accepted formally into the uh, MSBA process. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we sent a letter of, uh, or a statement of interest, an SOI, a statement of interest. We were formally accepted into the uh, process in 2015. And in 2016, we formed the High School Building Committee. Our High School Building Committee has been working together for six years. In 2019, the town of Arlington voted overwhelmingly, 77% of the voters voted to support the new high school. Uh, and they voted to support a $290 million high school rebuild on the existing site. I'm happy to report to the community this evening and to those in attendance that the project is on time and on budget. Our plan, uh, remains uh, to complete the new school by 2024, by the fall of 2024, and then complete the fields by the spring of 2025. Next slide, please. <clears throat> if you take a look at the site plan, um, you'll see uh, where we are building our new school. The new school is going to go um, over, most of it over the existing school and in front of the existing school. When you take a look at this, you'll see uh, fields in the background. Those are artificial turf fields. The advantage of those fields are that students can have longer seasons. We can have more gym classes and more activities outdoors. There's a connection of the bikeway that we finished towards the end of the project. Um, and you'll see the learning courtyard, the amphitheater, uh, the entrance on Mass Ave. Um, and um, th that's kind of a good footprint, a good look at our new school building. Next slide, please. So the transition timeline, which we're gonna go into detail tonight is as follows. Our current plan is to move into phase one classrooms to move into the new building that you're seeing constructed on Mass Ave by February 28th, Monday, February 28th. During uh, March, we'll start the demolition of the old school. In April, we move into and can start using the auditorium. And then through September of 2023, we'll be doing the construction of phase two of the project. Next slide, please. I want to take a second to um, recognize uh, and acknowledge the folks who will be speaking soon in this uh, in this presentation. First of all, an important partner for the town of Arlington is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the better known as the MSBA. The MSBA has has contributed 80 86 million dollars approximately to this project. And that is saving the taxpayers, obviously, a considerable amount of money. Um, we have been partnering with the MSBA uh, since we submitted the uh, statement for the, the, the uh, statement of interest in 2015. Um, and since we were accepted in their project, they have been partners with us both in terms of, of, of financing um, and, in, and in terms of uh, uh, technical expertise. HMFH is our architectural firm. They've been our partner on this project from the very beginning. Lori Coles the, is our lead architect on the project. Uh, Skanska is the owner's project manager. The firm is a nationally a world known firm uh, that does, does owner's project management in many areas, including uh, school construction, 
and Consigli is our contractor. Consigli uh, has been working with us uh, over the past several years. This team, uh, the MSBA, of course, many, many years of experience in school building projects, HMFH, Skanska, and Consigli have been working together. They've also worked together on other high school building projects and they bring their expertise to this project. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so, as I said, and I'm going to turn this over in a second um, to um, Jim Burroughs of Skanska, uh, but this project team has quite a bit of experience on these projects, on complex projects, and I'm going to let Jim Burroughs from Skanska take over from here. Thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, so obviously the high school project's a highly complex um, project, both in the building itself and just the logistics. Um, so as Jeff said, both Consigli, Skanska, and HMFH, as long as as well as the MSBA, um, do have a, a long list of projects that we've done that are um, that are phased, occupied uh, buildings such as this. Each project is obviously unique, but. Um, what, we, what that brings to the table is we're able to bring our lessons learned from previous projects um, to have foresight on issues before they become issues. Um, my, myself and John Lamar, who's on the call tonight, um, actually both worked on Winchester High School. That was also an active school, um, uh, very cl close neighbors. Um, so th those lessons learned, um, what we've learned over all those projects is um, that it starts with early pre-planning, um, and that's meeting with the school, um, meeting with the town, understanding the challenges well ahead and planning for those. And we've started that, uh, the logistics plans that we'll be going through um, with Consigli in just a minute are, have been developed over the last year and a half. As, as the project was designed, it was also planned for thinking about logistics, thinking about the school, traffic flow, all those pieces and parts. Um, the, the other piece of this is the, a robust communications plan, really digging in and understanding uh, who needs to know what and when. Uh, we've actually already had some early meetings with some of the uh, building managers in the area for, for the apartments and offices. Um, and ultimately, what that all comes down to is uh, minimizing the disruption. Obviously, this is a large project. There will be some disruption, and really, it's just that planning piece of it. We have, in phase one, the Schuler Court folks were obviously very close to uh, the construction, and we're able to successfully uh, navigate that phase um, and work well with them. And what I think was a successful phase um, for, for those reasons, the, the early planning and communications. Um, so with that said, I'm going to turn it over to John Lamar, who's a senior project manager with Consigli, uh, and he'll go through some uh, the finer details of uh, what phase two entails. So John. Thanks, Jim. Good evening, everybody. John Lamar, senior project manager with Consigli Construction. I actually work on site full time. Um, every day I report to the Island High School project. We have a staff of nine. Um, gonna get into three slides and an animation to show you um, how we're gonna dem demolish and construct what we call phase two. Uh, but going back to the staff of nine um, and Jim's point about Shula Court, we're, we're here every day. Um, we feel that we're part of the neighborhood. Um, that's how we, how we like to approach it uh, every morning myself and I have another mitigation manager. We drive the perimeter streets, the area, to make sure that we don't have a stray truck someplace queuing up before hours. Uh, there's certain blackout hours when there's certain times of the day when you are allowed to bring materials in and out, and there's certain times when you're not. Um, so we police it ourselves, um, work closely with the school and the abutting neighbors, as Jim discussed here. So on this slide, I'm going to get into a little bit of detail. Um, to orientate yourself and we did do this uh, a butter meeting several probably a year ago plus or minus maybe a little year and a half ago so not sure if i'm still speaking to the same audience or who attended that but um, phase one as you can see is right there on mass ave which was what i referred to as the front lawn uh shula court to your left uh what was pierce practice field oh, to the left of this document where we've got a, a parking lot or a construction staging area and then to the right millbrook drive 
and what was tennis courts and um, parking lot that we created for the staff. Um, we maintained and actually achieved more parking spots on site than previously existed, uh, meaning that whenever we shut down a parking area, we make sure that we return in kind the same count. So we're not pushing or forcing anybody from the facility or the staff onto the public streets. They, main, they maintain on the campus here. So phase one, we just talked about uh, is finishing up in February and getting ready for the next slide, please, which is phase two. So phase two, in essence, is we've created a U. We're taking out what is known as the col column building and the auditorium building and creating another classroom wing and administrative district, three-story building. Um, the logistics that Jim had talked about earlier and the pre-planning, um, the only way to get in and out of this area is through Millbrook. Um, the access road, as you all may or may not know, or I'm sure you do as you live in the area, is there's a tight corner around the red gym and another tight corner around the blue gym that does not allow for any large vehicles to, to pass in that area. So all of the materials coming in, all the demolition material is going to be going out, and all the new materials coming in, they're all coming off of Mill Street and Mill Brook. Well, maintaining access to the main entrance number two. Main entrance number two is at the corner of the Downs existing building that was set up in the summer of 2020, 2020 actually. Um, and that's also a, another remote outpost for uh, check in for students. So there's main entrance number one on Mass Ave, main entrance number two are the Downs building. The intent is the new school has opened up Mass Ave. There's a no parking along Mass Ave. It's for all the students to get dropped off and picked up on Mass Ave. You use the new main entrance number one, but still re trying to reduce the amount of traffic to uh, main entrance number two. So therefore, it's not congestion with construction and staff in the public. We are also creating what's not shown on the slide because it's happening as we speak is the existing baseball field. We're creating a, uh, another staff parking lot over there um, to alleviate some of the traffic coming off of Millbrook and Mill Street. Yes, thank you, who's ever got the cursor, I appreciate that. Um, coming in off of Shula Court. So, Just taking a look here before we go to the animation. Um, I'm sorry, the next slide, please. There we go. So this is a higher level of what we just looked at um, with color coding for construction zone, give you a better visual of traffic students. Again, that main entrance number two, there's an existing rotary circle there now that becomes the footprint of the new building. So we're shifting any parents or students. Um, they are dropped off at main entrance number two at the downs. They now would circulate through the temporary parking lots. Um, again, we touched base on that red gym upper left hand corner in this document. Um, you can only basically get a pickup truck by through there. So um, there's nothing, there's some site constraints that does not allow that area to be revised or regraded. Um, so we are constrained to that limited turn radius there. And Big picture uh, in February when we open the building, it will be open for Mass Ave, but the shrubbery plantings and hardscapes will not be in place because it's it's a dead of winter and we'll come back in early spring and put in the shrubbery and green, uh, greenery. Uh, sidewalks will be in place. There is um, to note on Shula Court, there's a, I think it's an additional 17 spaces being created. Uh, handicapped parking, as well as um, electrical vehicle charging stations. So before we go into the animation, it's going to show uh, the process of the demolition and the superstructure being constructed. Um, this is phase two. Um, phase three, I don't want to go into a deep dive, but on the same slide here is the Fusco and Blue Gym get taken down. We build it new gym facility or an athletic facility there. And then phase four, the red gym and the downs building get taken down. 
So as Jim talked about earlier, and that gets turned into synthetic um, turf field. So there's a lot of moving parts here, although they're not moving quickly because every phase is a 18 months, 15 months and a year and a half type of a, an approach, but um, we'll continue to work with the community and the abutters and the staff and the school and the town, uh, as I like to say, to be good neighbors to the, to the project, to the town. So the next slide is the animation. Um, you could fire that one up, please. So there's a timeline on the bottom here. You'll see um, this is strictly for the demolition and construction of the superstructure. Uh, you'll see that in a moment here. But so there's your main main one uh, main entrance number one. Look, as if we were flying by in a drone at a higher level. We still there's the temporary connector that you know, goes from the new building, the existing buildings. So the students walk from new to old in a covered uh, connector building. There's the main entrance number two that where I was referring to earlier. And now you can see the timeline on the bottom here, starting in March, going to November of the demolition of the existing building and the construction of the foundations and superstructure. So um, anticipated that there'll be approximately 30 trucks a day taking out the dem dem demolition material in between um, the no, no delivery time zones when students are being dropped off and picked up. There are piles. We will be driving piles as well for the foundations. And the building is a structural steel um, structure. And it looks, it's almost identical to the phase one in respect to metal stud framing, brick and roofing and windows that you see on the Mass Ave phase one. Um, So this is again a high level, just to show everybody what's happening in that U between new and existing and accessing Millbrook uh, and Mill Street. Jim? Yep, uh, thank you, John. Um, yeah, so John touched on much of this here, um, that recognizing the challenges that we have and putting and implementing mitigation measures are, are the key, really the, the pre-planning. Uh, John touched on the, the truck traffic, uh, making sure that we don't have trucks coming in at the same time as pickup drop-off, uh, both for safety and as well as just the um, uh, how much traffic that would be on Millbrook. Uh, dust and noise are obvious, obviously big concerns, uh, especially when there's demolition um, and steel work and piles. So the, the dust, um, you, you'll see uh, it's sprayed down dur during construction. Uh, phase one, I, I think we had minimal complaints on dust. Uh, Consigli and their subcontractors do a great job with that. Noise mitigation, that, that's going to be difficult with this phase, with just the activities that we do have. Obviously, a, as things come up, we have to uh, abide by uh, the work hours set, set in place by the town. Um, pest control is also a concern as well with the kind of work that we're doing. So those, we, have, we did have some in phase one. Those are reviewed, uh, sent in, in into the project, re reviewed by the pest control uh, consultant that Consigli has on board. Um, and environmental, this is a, another big concern. Um, obviously with all of the dust, uh, there's dust monitoring throughout so, so that um, it, we can recognize if there is an issue. So again, parking drop off, uh, the, the car circulation around the site, I think uh, John touched on much of that. Um, and then just the overall pedestrian safety and access to the building. Um, and again, John touched on, on much of this. So again, uh, just to reiterate, it, the pre-planning, uh, the communications, uh, understanding what um, challenges we have, and also constant maintenance of that plan throughout the phase, so that it, um, if we do get, are getting complaints on a cer certain topic, we can work with Consigli and Consigli have been great partners all through phase one to see if there's any type of solution to work around an issue that comes up. Um, so, so again, it's about minimizing the, the disruption and uh, to echo what uh, John said, just being good neighbors. Um, so I think, jump to the next slide.
I think we moved to questions and answers, Jim. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I will, you know, let people uh, raise their hands and talk, but we've got some uh, questions that have come in first. First question from one of the attendees, Jim uh, and, and John is, what are the official working hours? So, oh, go ahead, John. Oh, you got it, Jim. Yep, um, so the, the official working hours, the typical working hours are seven to 3.30. Um, we do have limitations on um, heavy equipment on weekends, um, as well as the, the, the start time of those as well. Um, so it's typically uh, seven to three thirty is the typical day, but there'll probably will be some um, extended days, but we're limited by the town uh, on the back end of that. Um, and then Saturday work because of the tightness of the, of the schedule, uh, we will need Saturday uh, work most likely throughout phase, phase two. Thank you, Jim. Um, so uh, we'll go to the chat and then I can call on folks. The first chat question is, Will the butters be provided with details for when the demolition will occur, specific dates and times? Jim or John? Yeah, so in a week in advance, we provide an update to Skanska uh, with our details of what may or may not be impacting the uh, streets and large activities. And then Jim can explain what they do with those updates. But the other part of that question is demolition will occur Again, Jim mentioned heavy equipment. We can't start heavy equipment for the town of Arlington until eight in the morning. Um, and depending on the time of the year or the weather, we may extend it an hour uh, if we have if we have the daylight hours at the at the other end. In this particular case, we will because the demolition is anticipated to start in late March and April into early May. Thank you, John. And Jim, if you can touch yeah. on what the announcements, the weekly. Yeah. So, so the, uh, the, the weekly updates go out uh, at the, uh, I believe it's on Friday, they go out. You can sign up for those. And I, I think the, the, that's the last slide that will show with resources. Um, and th they're also posted uh, on the website as well. So um, again, that's the week prior. Y you'll see exactly what's going to happen. Um, and, and then the overall schedule um, in March, they'll begin uh, the phase two work, uh, uh, right when phase two opens. Um, and right away, get, get right into demo uh, piles over the summer and then steel work starting at the tail end of next summer. So, so that's the 30,000 foot uh, schedule. Thank you very much. Next question um, is, will on-street parking on Millbrook Drive be prohibited? Currently cars are parked uh, by the high rock brick building. So on Millbrook. Mil yeah, Millbrook Drive, all of the, any legal parking spots that are there now, that, that will remain unchanged. Okay, so yep. legal spots remain unchanged. That's the answer to that question. Uh, next question, when will work on the Schuler Court side be completely finished? When will the 17 parking spaces be added and who will have access, school only or and or residents? <clears throat> Jim, I can take the first part. Um, the 17 plus or minus spots will be when we open up phase one, uh, February of the 2022. Um, and like I said, I just looked on the drawings quickly, Jim, on my shoulder here, there's two handicap spots and four EV charging station spots. After that, I'm not sure who gets assigned or if those are public. Yeah, we would have to ch check back on uh, with the school administration as far as where those if those spots will be uh, be assigned um, or if they, they will be publics. So we'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. Um, the uh, next question is: Will Schuler Court be used to access teacher parking throughout the next phase? So will Schuler Court be used to access teacher parking during the next phase of construction? Yes, in phase two, I touched on that the um, we're making a new, I'm going to call it uh, not spillover, but we're making a new uh, annex. How's that? That's a good word to use. We're use, making another uh, teacher parking lot that they will be using Shula Court to access that okay. and exit that. Okay, thank you. Another question came in on the Millbrook Drive uh, issue. Again, the Millbrook Drive parking currently reduces the street to single lane when cars 
or deliveries are being made at the professional building. Um, do we have any comment on that or? So my only comment to that was we did meet with the office buildings uh, manager and, and that topic did come up. So that's something that we have to work with the town. If there is um, an issue there with deliveries, uh, coordinating that. Um, so yeah, th that's being looked at and addressed. Okay. Um, all right. Are there any other questions? You're welcome as a panelist. If you want to raise your hand, I'll just, uh, is, would anyone else, if anyone else would like to talk, ask a question, I'm looking at all the attendees. Did we answer that question that came in as an email? Uh, no, I don't believe we did. Do you want to refer to that? Yeah. Um, John? Yeah, I'll take the front and end of it, John. Um, Just repeat, the, you can restate the question, Jim, for everybody. Yeah, yeah so, so there, there was a question whether um, construction traffic, uh, or well, excuse me, that there would be a connection from Millbrook out to Grove Street. Um, so this was discussed early on in the project. So as it stands right now, that will be pedestrian traffic through the DPW over to the high school site. Um, there there will be a vehicular gate in between two, the, both campuses. So that won't be a public road that, that, that can be, be cut through. Uh, so John, did you want to touch on the, uh, the truck traffic? Uh, I, think, I think in the presentation, Jim, we answered the email's question, which was, truck traffic can't drive around the yep. uh the blue or red gym so everything is still going we do phase three which will i'm sure we'll do another butters uh session like this phase three the majority of the, if not all the construction traffic will be coming in and out on shula court again because you can't drive around the back of the buildings with it with large equipment yeah um okay so there's a question here, you know, by the way, just, just to clarify the Millbrook um, double parking issue, that, that is a town issue. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily something on the building committee in our purview. Um, <clears throat> will the, uh, there's a the question that came in, how often are these webinars held is the best way to sign up for upcoming meetings, webinars uh, via the website? Yes, you can sign up for alerts and information from us on the website and you'll get notifications about different things that are happening related to the building committee. The next meeting um, is, uh, the next public meeting is in January. I got to look at that date. Um, uh, there's a January, I didn't have it on the top of my I believe it's the 25th, Jeff. You're right, it is the 25th. Yeah. So Tuesday the 25th, we're gonna have a community forum uh, at seven in the evening. And that's a chance for anyone in the community to ask questions. Some other questions that came in the Q&A, will the presentation deck be made available? Um, Jim and John, is our, our plan is to make it available on the website, the deck, yeah. Yes, yep. Yes, so we, we will make, yes, we'll answer that. We'll answer that, uh, we'll put that on the deck. We'll put that on the website. The next question, not sure my question was answered. When will work on Schuler Court side be completely finished? For example, e.g. generator removed, trucks not operating on that site. John, do you want to take that? So when will the Schuler Court site be completely finished? Are we talking April of 2025 when we're all done with everything? Yeah, probably come back to the uh, the fall of 2024. So yeah, so I guess the, the question, uh, the answer to that question is the fall of 24, um, everything should be uh, answered, uh, should be completed. Next question. Um, Okay, so about Millbrook Drive, um, this is an issue for people who live in Brigham Square. Millbrook Drive is the only access to this 114 unit complex. Um, so yes, that we, we completely understand that. A question um, that's come in about Brigham Square, it's, it's really a town issue. I don't know if, if Jim or John, we can further comment on that in terms of access on Millbrook Drive. Do you have any, anything else to add? So I, I think the only thing that it came on our radar because it will obviously affect the truck traffic going in and out. So it yeah. will affect construction if it is an issue. So it's an issue for the construction project as well um, for th that we will have to, uh, as you said, have the town address. 
So it's obviously a concern for the uh, construction project as well. Um, yeah, okay. So, I mean, I, I, it's noted and we'll, um, we'll, be in, we'll be in touch with the town on that. If we haven't already. Any other attendee, you're, you're welcome to ask questions live if you wanna raise your hand or if you wanna put in the chat, uh, I'd like to ask a question live. I'll just, I'll just um, allow you to talk. <clears throat> anybody, anybody of the attendees? I just want to make sure everyone has a chance to, to speak if you'd like to. Um, there's, there's something on the screen here. Um, okay, so <clears throat> anyone, I just want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak. If you have any questions before we sign off. Anyone at all? Any questions that haven't been answered? Anybody wanna? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, do you foresee, wait a minute, as there was a question that did come in uh, in the chat. Do you foresee any road closures on Schuler Court during phase two? I am new to the area. So phase two, which begins starting on uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the spring. John? No, uh, phase one, we did the, uh, during the summer when school was out, we did the majority of what we needed to do to go down Shula Court from phase one. Um, so during phase two construction, no. Uh, during phase three construction, which again is the uh, uh, athletic building, there will be some, there will be road closures that, that actually will be closed off to the public. They'll only be for access for construction. Shula so, Court. Correct. Any other questions, folks? This is your chance that you can you can put it in the chat, um, or you can go to the Q and A, or you can raise your hand and I'll give you a call on. You can talk live. Uh, oh, not a question. Uh, this is from one of the attendees, but I wanted to thank uh, one of the construction people who moved construction trash from my front garden. Appreciate that. So thank you to uh, the team for doing that for one of our neighbors. Okay, any other questions? Just wanna make sure we cover this. Well, listen, we, we uh, appreciate all of you uh, joining us. Um, you can sign up for construction at web, uh, updates on the project website. You see that on your screen right now. The email is ahsbuilding at arlington.k12.ma.us. Um, any concerns or questions you have, we try to get uh, back to people as quickly as we possibly can. We, uh, I just want to say on behalf of the building committee, which has been working together now for five years, we began working as a team in 2016, December of 2016. We are very excited about where the project is. We're excited to see students come into the building at the end of February of 2022. It's been something we've been working on, uh, striving for for a long time. This is, as uh, the other uh, people on the panel today said, a community-wide effort. It's being funded by the taxpayers of Arlington and the state of Massachusetts. And so all of us have a stake in the success of this school. And all of us uh, have a stake, obviously, in the, in the success uh, of the students who attend the school, uh, current students and future students. So we thank you for supporting this project. Uh, we thank you for coming to tonight's session. If you have any further questions, any uh, concerns, just reach out to us. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And we uh, ask everyone to have a great evening, uh, a great holiday season, and a happy 2022.